and welcome to Petrol Ped and welcome to the brand new Audi A1. Roll the titles. So here you go guys, here it is, the brand new Audi A1. Now I have to say today is probably the worst weather condition I've ever tried to film a review in, but I've got no choice, I only have this car for today. I have to say a huge thank you to Five Oaks Audi and the Harwoods Group for reaching out to me last week and saying, look, we get the car, it goes live on Monday, we've got a new demonstrator, it's in a beautiful spec, what a car, we'll talk more about the spec of this later. It's yours for the day, so <laughs> um, now, I've always been a bit of a fan of the old A1. I've never driven one. I particularly like the S1, but I have to say this new facelift version really does it for me. The, the spec of this particular demo I think looks brilliant, but it has some really interesting design cues from the more uh, recent um, Audis that have hit the range. I see a lot of <laughs> RS4 in this car. I know that might sound really stupid, but I really do. Now, from a, uh, it has changed. The underpinnings of this car are shared with things like the, the new VW Polo. So it's three centimeters wider. It's six centimeters longer, but really interestingly, the wheelbase is nine centimeters longer. So what that basically means is you get a bit more space in the back and a completely more grown up driving experience. I also like design cues like these little vents across the top here as a nod to the S1 Quattro rally car of the 80s. But the weather is foul, so I suggest we jump in this car and have a look at the inside because the inside really is something very special. <laughs> it's just grim out there. You know that kind of constant drizzly rain that gets you really wet without you realizing it? Well, that's what we've got out there. Now, even if you're not an Audi fan, you can't deny that Audi makes some of the best interiors going. Um, this little A1 is absolutely no exception to that. In fact, for me, my expectation of a car in this class is that maybe because the budget of these cars is so important, you might not get such a premium feel in the interior. Not in this car. Now, I'm just gonna quickly start the car and fire up the screens because um, we've got, firstly, um, unlike the previous uh, Gen A1, we've got the new Audi virtual cockpit display. TFT screen in there, I'm sure you've all seen it before, but you've got a range of different options. You can have your sat-nav map and change the size of the speedo and the rev counter. And you've also got a touch screen um, here. Now, again, previous Audis in my S4, um, you've normally got some kind of controller down here to manage the, the, the MMI. This is all touch screen. And in my short time in the car so far, very intuitive, very easy to use. It comes with basic things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Um, but this car does have a few options. Actually, let me rephrase that. This car has pretty much every option going. Now you've got quite a few different trim options and engine options in the A1, which makes it a little bit complex, but bear with me. The base model is called the SE. They start from about 18 and a half thousand pounds. Then you've got the Sport, then you've got the S line, which we're sat in right now, and the S line starts at just over 21 thousand pounds. However, if you start ticking some boxes, and I have the spec sheet of the car we're in, because it is a quite uh, spectacularly specced demonstrator. Now, so first things first, I'm gonna talk about the engine in a moment, but this is the, um, it's a one litre three cylinder engine and it's got 118 PS coupled to the S-Tronic uh, automatic gearbox. We'll talk about this one around the road because it's actually a really nice little gearbox. Um, but things that have been ticked on this car include uh, we've got lovely Alcantara leather trim, uh, adaptive speed assist, advanced key, storage pack, LED ambient lighting pack. That basically means you can set all of these really cool things to different colours. Very funky indeed. Um, 
Uh, introductory volume, no idea what that is. Technology pack, comfort and sound pack, startup version S, space saving spare wheel, so no uh, tyre gunk, that's excellent. Toolkit and pack, luggage compartment pack, windscreen and grey tinted uh, front centre armrest, that's this. Uh, contrast pack two, um, though, so we've got a beautiful colour, so this, um, this car is called um, turbo blue and it's got a mythos black roof so that contrast is an option actually but I think it looks really smart um, and Audi pre-sense that's the basically where it puts the brakes on if you can have a crash uh, and dual zone climate control now you add all of those things up get ready for this the car we're sat in is just under thirty thousand pounds so you've got this eighteen and a half grand to thirty thousand pounds question is is it worth that? Now, uh, let's jump into the back because this longer wheelbase should give me more space in the back. Let's see what the comfort's like for the passenger, shall we? Here we go. <laughs> ah, one minute. Different technique required. Ah, there we go. Left leg in first. Out. So. <laughs> I, I didn't expect huge amounts of room in the back of this car. It is a small car, let's face it. And this driver's seat is positioned for me driving. I have very long legs and tend to have the seat almost as far back as it will go. So I, I kind of expected this. However, there's certainly enough room in the back here for... Uh, for children, so you know, a couple of kids are going here, no problem at all. It does seat three. You've got ISOFIX, you know, these standard kind of ISOFIX things. I'd love to know how many people lose these. Um, so, not too bad for room in the back. Um, for me, the extra wheelbase really pays dividends when you're driving, but let's have a quick jump around the back and have a look at the boot space. Got to get out first though. <laughs> extra cake myself. Now, now the rain's died down a little bit, maybe we can have a little bit of a chat about aesthetics as well as going and popping the boot. I think the rear of this car looks fantastic. This kind of dark or black roof, contrasting with the colour. By the way, I didn't actually book the car to be matching my petrol ped fleece, but it does have a pretty good size boot, to be fair. You can get lots of stuff in here. The seats drop. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty practical. Now, one of the things we need to have a chat about is the various engine options in this car because it is quite complicated and Audi have got this new designation on the back of their cars that probably needs a little bit of explaining. The A1 is initially available with four power options based on three different engines. This car is fitted with a three-cylinder 1.0-litre, which has a 94bhp option, and this the 114bhp. There will also be a 148bhp 1.5-litre and a 2.0-litre with 197bhp. On the back of these cars you will see 25, 30, 35 or 40 TFSI. So what does the 30 TFSI on this car really mean? Sadly it doesn't mean it's a 3 litre. Audi have adopted a new model naming structure to allow for future models to reflect the added performance delivered by hybrid and pure EV power units like the e-tron. The scale runs from 25 to 70. Basically the bigger the number the more power. So this A1 is a 30 as 114 sits in the range 107 to 127 bhp. This will not be used by the S, RS or R8 models. See? Told you it was complicated. Now, just before we take it for a drive, let's just have a little bit of a chat about some of the design cues in this car. Uh, what I like about it is it, the old, the outgoing A1 was quite rounded in its styling. This has got lots of creases and angular moments, a bit more aggressive. And, and, and as I said, there are cues in this car, the haunches at the back. When you're driving the car and you look out the rear view mirror, you kind of see the, the rear haunch over the, the rear wheels and it's very reminiscent of driving an RS4. I think the front's really nice and aggressive. I've mentioned how much I like the back already. 
I think we need to take this car for a drive because for me, in the short time I've driven this car, it's a very, very capable machine. So come on, let's go up the road for a bit of a spin. So here we are then out on the open road in the brand new Audi A1. Now, there are a couple of different driving modes that you can have this car set to. You've got an efficiency mode, an auto mode, dynamic, and then individual. And in individual, you're able to kind of set a couple of things around the suspension and the kind of sportiness of the car. I've driven it in all, all of those modes. My two favorites, auto is quite nice. It just kind of does everything for you. But for the purposes of this review, I'm gonna use the drive select toggle and I'm going to toggle it into dynamic mode. You can either do that by just pushing the toggle or by going onto the touch screen. What I get now is a little bit more sporty response, but what I also like is it automatically drops the gearbox into sport mode. So let's have a chat about this gearbox. Now, for me, when I'm driving a small little hatch like this, I just kind of have this mental thing about it should be a manual gearbox. I've got a manual in my Mini, and just being able to kind of be in control and throw it around and that for me is all the character of a small mini car and, and whenever I've driven small cars in this class with auto boxes before to be honest the auto box has not never really been that great and it just didn't feel right but in this car because this car although it's a small car it doesn't drive like a small car it, it feels like a much much bigger Audi to me and um, you could quite happily Obviously you can't drive blindfolded, but you could be in this car and it, it has the same feel as a kind of A3, A4 even. It does feel like a big car, so the auto box suddenly makes sense. Uh, this is Audi's seven-speed S-Tronic, which is a really good gearbox, which makes it make sense even more. Now, when you're in the dynamic mode, it puts it into sport, so I can have it, if I just pull the gear lever back towards me, I can put it into the normal auto where it changes for you. Um, or you can put it into the sport version of that. My problem with it in the normal drive mode is it's a bit lazy. When you come into corners, it kind of doesn't downshift as you're decelerating. And what you end up with is being in a corner and as you come out of the exit phase of the corner, you put your foot down and the car has to change down for you and, and that can kind of just unsettle the balance of the car. And I don't like that very much. So when you put it into the sport mode, you just pull it back towards you. It holds onto the gears a bit longer, but it also is just a little bit more intuitive. And I've been driving it in that mode quite a lot. Now you're not gonna buy this car because of the exhaust note. And you're probably not gonna buy this car because of the outright performance. 118 PS nowadays is nothing really, but it's enough to give this car a cheeky little character. I chuck it into one of my favorite bends here gearbox down shifts for me down into third that means I'm in the right gear to pull away and it's all right you're not going to get yourself into any trouble in this car but what I do really like is it's just got this really nice poise on the road the suspension is is firm but compliant it soaks the bumps really nicely and and the car feels really nice and settled not as skitty and jitterish as some of the kind of mini hatch uh, competitors it's up against. Rolls-Royce Cullinan on final test going the other way. You get a lot of that round here. Are there any things I don't like? Well, I really like the styling and aesthetics and for me it's right on the money and I would find it hard to fault any of that. And um, inside the cabin, um, ice, again, it's, it is really difficult. My only fault would be gearbox when it's in drive is just a little bit unpredictable but when it's in the sport mode um, and in that dynamic setting it really does make a big difference out and out grunt this car's not got enough grunt for me if you think you know my mini's got best part of a hundred horsepower more than this but if you wanted one of those there are the bigger engine options at the moment and then there's bound to be an s version of this and please audi wow what would it be like if you did an rs1 that would be brilliant so you know you don't buy this car for out and out performance the other thing i don't like about this particular car is the price i mean come on 30 grand is a lot of money 
things I love about this car, when the, when the light starts to fade, you get this amazing kind of ambient lighting and you can change the colors. And in the, in the doors, um, where the door handles are, there's the kind of, I just think, it just looks fantastic. The door handle and ambient lighting on these edge bits looks really smart. The dash itself is great. I love virtual cockpit. So there are lots and lots of things I like about this car, uh, that's for sure. So if you're considering a small hatch, should you consider the new Audi A1? Well, very simple answer to that is yes. As long as you're happy with the budget, although, as I've said earlier on in the film, they, they are from £18,500, although there are lots and lots of lovely spec options. The virtual cockpit for me in this car makes this particular segment, it just stands out in terms of quality feel. And with the Google Maps integration that virtual cockpit has now, it's almost like you're flying a low-level jet, and it kind of zooms in and out. It's really, really very clever. But yeah, you, you kind of... For me, it's very difficult to fault. It looks great from the outside, super premium feel on the inside, but it's the larger vehicle driving dynamics I find really interesting. It just doesn't drive like a small car at all. It's got a super compliant suspension. It's sporty and nippy, even in this kind of smaller engine version. Very impressive car indeed. Something I really, really do like about this car Obviously, I keep banging on about virtual cockpit, but for me, the fact that that screen is integrated into the dashboard and not some iPad stuck on it, like so many manufacturers do, love that. Do that more, do that more car manufacturers. Integrate it into the dashboard, it looks so much better. <laughs> I have to say, this car puts a big smile on your face. What are my final impressions of the new A1? Well, it's impressed me greatly, I must say. I think it looks fantastic and in this particular trim this colour with a black roof just looks spot on. The interior has such a premium feel, I love virtual cockpit anyway but for a car in this class I think it's, it's, it's class leading in, in every way. It's when you, when you pitch it into a corner it's got a really lovely driving feel, it drives much much bigger. Than, than its size. It just feels like a nice big planted car and I think that's its party piece. And as a platform for more powerful engine types, clearly there are a few more powerful engines that you can get now, but when the S1 and the maybe RS1 comes along, the, the platform's there and ready and, and I think they will be unbelievably good. But you know, any car in this class to beat this new A1 for me, it's going to have to really bring its A-game. <laughs> Sorry for the pun. But I have to say a huge thank you to Five Oaks Audi and Harwoods for reaching out last week and inviting me to come and test drive their new uh, demonstrator. It is a demonstrator, so I'm sure if you gave them a ring, I'll put their details below. They would be more than happy to arrange a test drive, and I thoroughly recommend it. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, Please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. But from the very cheeky, luxurious feeling, and let's face it, drop dead gorgeous Audi A1. I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.